This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Michelle is in the middle of getting her doctorate, or maybe not in the middle. She's almost done, and she has had some real trials and tribulations along the way, and we really appreciate her taking the time to do the research and work so hard on these segments that she shares with us quite often. And Michelle has another very interesting woman to tell us about this morning, almost as interesting as Michelle herself. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Deb, and good morning to all our viewers. I'm so happy to be with you today. Right now, our nation is facing an unprecedented crisis, and it is impacting some of the people we depend on the most, our farmers and our ranchers. Today, I want to introduce you to an unlikely 19th century heroine for farmers and ranchers everywhere. And she made her mark in Kansas. Before she took to the stage and enthralled audiences, Mary Elizabeth Lease was born Mary Clients to Irish immigrant parents in Pennsylvania in 1850. During the American Civil War, the Clients family suffered greatly. Mary's father and older brother marched off to war in support of the Union. By war's end, both would die. Her father spent time in the notorious Andersonville prison. Poverty made life difficult for the Clients family. By 1870, Mary left her mother and siblings behind and headed west to Kansas. A devout Catholic, Mary sought employment as a teacher at the Osage Mission near St. Paul, Kansas. While at the mission, she met and married a local pharmacist, Charles Lease. For the first time in her life, Mary enjoyed prosperity and security. However, the financial panic of 1873 saw the Leases lose everything. Mary and Charles picked up and moved to Denison, Texas. Farming was hard and life proved difficult for Mary. While in Texas, she gave birth to six children, two of whom died in infancy. Her experience as a farm wife proved to Mary that the plight of the farmer, the working classes, and those who toiled long hours for little pay was being neglected by politicians. Mary also found time to study law while in Denison. Not content to accept their lot in life, the leases again moved, this time back to Kansas. They settled in the growing community of Wichita in 1883. In Wichita, Mary became active in numerous social causes, including temperance, suffrage, and took up the cause of African-American women's suffrage as well. Eventually, she began working for the Union Labor Party. As a labor activist, she also championed for the rights of workers. By the late 1880s, Mary became a member of the People's Party, also known as the Populists. Taking up the cause of Kansas farmers who were protesting high mortgage interest and railroad rates, she became a powerful voice on behalf of the farmer. She traveled the country speaking to any audience that would listen as she railed against big corporations' greed and ineffective government policies that brought about the downfall of so many family farmers. While farmers, ranchers, and laborers adored Mary, she was not without her detractors. William Allen White said of Lease, she could recite the multiplication tables and set a crowd hooting and hurrahing at her will. Others said she was unladylike, unwomanly, and argumentative, one critic said Mary was a petticoated smut mill. Her venomous tongue is the only remarkable thing about the old harpy. Mary's shining moments came when she was on stage. She delivered her most important address at New York's famed Cooper Union on August 11, 1896. She outlined the plight of working class Americans and urged them to push back against big money and politics. In other lectures, she fired verbal shots directly at Wall Street. Wall Street owns the country. It is no longer a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, but a government of Wall Street, by Wall Street, and for Wall Street, she observed. She also implored families to stand their ground in the face of eviction when they could not make high mortgage payments. We will stand by our homes and firesides by force if necessary, and we will not pay our debts to the loan shark companies. The people are at bay. Let the bloodhounds of money who dogged us thus far be aware. While Mary's public life was active, by 1896, her personal life was in turmoil. She divorced Charles and moved to New York City with their children. She spent her time working as a lawyer, activist, newspaper editor, and was a popular lecturer. During her lifetime, Mary was able to see women gain the vote, the passage of prohibition, and reforms like the direct election of senators and the regulation of railroads and banks. On October 29, 1933, at the age of 83, Mary Elizabeth Lease drew her last breath. 
She was memorialized in newspapers across the globe as a fierce advocate for those who were voiceless. Today, she's remembered in Wichita and a bronze statue commemorates her legacy. I hope you enjoyed our look at the life and the activism of Mary Elizabeth Lease. I hope you'll join me next time for another historical adventure somewhere around Kansas. Thank you for sharing your Wednesday morning with me. I'm Deb Goodrich, and I'll see you somewhere around Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.